friends and welcome to Exosos. Welcome to episode six of the Serenity Knitting Society podcast. My name's Alex. Buddy's down here. You'll see him, I'm sure, at some point. And this is a knitting podcast <laughs> based out of North Coast, New South Wales. And I feel like I haven't done this for a really long time. Hey, how you going? <laughs> um, my suggestion for this episode, I've got quite a bit actually. I thought it was going to be a short one. It's probably not going to be a short one. My suggestion would be to grab a beverage of some description. Um, maybe a project. Come hang out. So feel free to pause, pause here. I feel like Blue's Clues, if anyone's seen that. You can pause here. <laughs> If we need to go and get something. If not, let's jump straight on in. Um, so I'm really excited and I'm not even going to make you wait to the end. Maybe in the future, but I just don't have, I personally don't have the patience for that. <laughs> um, we have an excellent giveaway that we've been running the last couple of weeks that's been sponsored by the beautiful Catherine of Bed of Roses which is a gorgeous store out of Norway. Highly recommend. Oh, look, I was just thinking I should have really bought one. No, I've already got one here. I'm surrounded by Bed of Roses. I, um, I'm going to need to put like gifted on everything because I, I'm pretty much all my project bags that um, Catherine was kind enough to gift for me. Um, I have used them. I am using them all, <laughs> all the time. So um, I will probably mention them in every video. And I will put the little thing on there, but I just really want to, I just want you to know that I'm using them because I just really love them and I'm just going to keep using them. Um, oh, what? Can you see something else? Oh, he's gone. He can see something outside. Oh, okay. Bye. Um, so the beautiful Catherine of Bed of Roses, Norway. Hopefully that's going to flip the right way around. Oops, that way. So this beautiful giveaway is sponsored by Catherine and it's been running on over on Instagram. So I'm assuming you've either watched the last episode or checked out the Instagram post. So, you know, it, it is closed now because I'm, I'm drawing, I have drawn the winner using a random comment generator this morning. So it's all closed now, but I'm just going to leave some suspense. This is my, this is my version of a drum roll coffee sip. Honestly, I'm so excited for this person because I um, it was random comment generated, and then I was looking at it, but I like the name was like ringing in my head, and I was kind of like, I feel like I've, I feel like this person's actually messaged me on Instagram, so I've gone back through my DMs, and actually they have, and I was really thrilled about that. Actually, I was really really thrilled. So without further ado, although I did definitely pump that one up a little bit because I'm really hoping somebody's very excited. Um, the winner of the Bed of Roses Serenity in the Society giveaway is Kimberly of Coastal Storm Knits. Yay! I really hope you're freaking out. <laughs> I really hope you're freaking out. Um, yeah, so Kimberly sent me a message, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago or something and just saying, hey, really love your podcast or we're just kind of chatting, you know, very briefly about some stuff that's going on. And actually, I've had a little look at, um, I've had a little look at Kimberly's Instagram. Gosh, she's got some beautiful projects, really, really beautiful projects. Um, but I'm just, I couldn't be more thrilled for you, Kimberly. I couldn't. Um, so I will be, if, if you don't watch this, it's no big deal. I'm just going to... Um, I assume you will because you already were watching the podcast. So you might, I'm hoping you're going to see it here first. That's my real hope. So what I'll probably do is if you see it here, I'm going to give it like, I don't know, 24, 48 hours or something because I'd really love this to be the first place that the person who see that you're going to see it. Um, but I will contact you via the Instagrams, via the DM. So if for some reason, <laughs> you know, you might get that one first, but I'd love to give that person, I'd love to give you the opportunity, Kim, to see, um, to see it here first. So fingers crossed, and then um, yeah, I'll, I'll pass your details on to, to Catherine, who will organise the the prize and how that's going to work. Sorry, that was just me clicking that. If you can hear it, it's a habit I have sometimes. Um, so I'm so excited, and thank you so much to everyone who entered. I really, really enjoyed reading everyone's answers. And actually, oh, I was going to look. Um, 
I was gonna share to you what Kimberly's Serenity was, but I'm, I'm recording on my phone, but I'm almost 100% sure, because I read it this morning, when I say almost, 99.8% sure, that it was um, Kimberly's Serenity, how Kimberly finds Serenity was walking along, like walking along the beach in the early morning, which I thought was so beautiful. And uh, I remember her friend commented on and said that she totally agrees. <laughs> so the friend, so it was really, really lovely. Um, and I really, oh, there he is. Hey, bud. Oh, so this is going to be interesting. Buddy, say hello. Hello. Um, I have all this yarn piled here and um, Buddy will eat, try and eat it. <laughs> so unless I can get him to just settle and just relax, so, which is seeming unlikely, I might have to get up and move him. I was hoping to not have to start this episode 65 bedillion times. Meow. Yeah, you can't. You can't eat it. It's so rare that I have any acquisitions, but I have quite a few today. Just come relax. Oops, sorry. Um, we'll just see if he will sit here with me for a little bit. Probably not. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm so thrilled for you, Kimberly. You'll have to tell me what you decide to get with your gift certificate. I'd love to see. And um, but yeah, thank you. I was trying to think, what was I saying before? Thank you so much to everyone who commented. Like there were there were over 5, 500 comments. 5,000 is a bit excessive. 500 comments, that's a lot of comments. And like people really got around it and tagged lots of friends. And you know, it was really beautiful seeing everyone's answers. I must admit, I had to give up at one point. Why do you do this? You, <laughs> yeah, good, okay. Um, I had to give up at one point actually um, answering everybody because it, there was just so many I couldn't keep up with them but I did read nearly all of them um, and they were just the most beautiful the most beautiful answers so I'm really um I'm grateful to Catherine for allowing me to 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 do this and to be able to um you know have a giveaway that's just so incredible and then I'm also so grateful to you all for actually participating in it and um yeah definitely definitely more giveaways in future it's something that I just am so I just love the excitement of it all so for sure so without further ado let's get into the knitting if buddy will is that all right with you yeah he will allow it um what i'm wearing so this is do you know what because he's kind of comfortable i'm wondering if maybe i don't do what i'm wearing straight away because i'm gonna have to take it off i'll tell you a little bit about it and then i might have to show you a bit later because He's really comfortable and anyone who has a cat knows that like once they're happy you kind of just want to keep them could you not please thanks um you kind of just want to keep them that way so <laughs> i'll tell you a bit about it and then i'll show you for real this is my waiting for rain shawl um and you know what i didn't actually even look up who it's by which was a bit remiss of me I got all excited, I actually had a little bit of a theme going for today, but I got all excited about my theme and actually forgot to look up who it's by. So I will put it in the description bar, apologies for that, particularly um, particularly for the um, designer. Please don't bite me. I know you want to bite the yarn. It's not really about me, is it? Um, Yes, so it's my way for Rachel. Just FYI, I'm really, I'm a little bit tired today. I'm really thrilled to be here, but I'm feeling, I'm feeling, and you probably picked it up, I'm feeling a little bit subdued. It's been a big work week. It's my first full week of work in quite a while um, with about oh, 12 hours worth of driving mixed in there. So I'm a real, um, just feeling, I'm actually feeling quite, um, Serenity is a good word. I'm feeling quite content. I'm feeling quite peaceful, but I'm feeling a little bit not high energy. I'm kind of like middle of the road. Oh, there's a car starting. Can you hear that? Um, yeah, I'm just feeling kind of chill, which is kind of nice to film a podcast, to be honest, right at that chill level. Um, but it probably means that my brain is going to take slightly longer to recall the things. I do have a list, but I just didn't, I didn't make the choice about what shawl I was going to wear until five seconds before, um, maybe five minutes before, and I grabbed a couple other things. So it's my Wedding for Rain shawl. It's uh, knit in the Sonder Yarn Co. Grace in the colorway um, Boreal. I think it's Boreal, um, which as you can see, sort of it's actually not the most obvious 
with my charcoal jumper um, is the most gorgeous like deep forest green and I have named this and kind of think of this as my Artemis shawl so I'm super into are you gonna go and eat the yarn yeah you can't have it no no you can't have it you could go you could go out that way if you wanted you want to go out that way go and explore He's like really biting my hand. It's just not necessary. You can go and play with something else. Look, here. Oh, okay. Whee! We're gonna see how that goes. <laughs> Giving him a tag to play with. He may come back. I may need to pause. We'll see. <laughs> um, so I think of it as my Artemis shawl and I, I just, um, you want me to plop in my mouth? Cat fluff. Oh, I know, it's just too... The other option is what I'm... Actually, you know what I'm going to do. Look, we're all friends here, okay? So I know that there's part of us that all want to see the pretty yarn and I promise it'll come back, but I'm actually just going to chuck this on top. <laughs> this is like real world. It's just like a... Because he'll... He won't... If he can't see it, he probably won't remember it's in there. Or he'll remember and just won't work out how to get to it. It's like real life <laughs> where I have to put blankets over my yarn so that Buddy doesn't remember it's there and then he'll either have a nap or he'll go off and find something else to do. <laughs> okay so when I was knitting this oh yeah so I bought this as my I think last year actually as my birthday yarn with some other I did like a big order from a sparse tricot and so it was before Sonde Yarn Co. was Sonde Yarn Co. officially. I think they were just kind of in the transition phase. And so they were still selling a lot of their yarn under the Aspas Tricot name. Um, oh, I've got cat hair on my face. Just wouldn't be a podcast if I didn't have fluff on my face, would it? Um, so I bought this and I bought the yarn for my Fleur shawl. And I think a couple of other Ramas and a few things. That's a good idea. He's sitting on my box of yarn. I have like a plastic tub with all my yarn in it. And it's like one of Buddy's favourite spots to sleep. Um, I'm going to leave that like that because it's all weird now. So let's just, let's just leave that. And I'll get it out in a minute. Um, I'll be like a magician. Here's the yarn. <laughs> Anyway, so I bought this. Oh yeah, I can show it to you now. So I bought it um, in my birthday, I think, last year. and um, But I didn't get to knitting it till I think early 2020... Where are we in? 2022? And I have a real love, a real love of light mythology. I really love um, archetypes. I really love... Um, and I'm... A lot of my... A lot of my, I'm trying to think about how to best explain it. So I love that from like a humanistic psychology, kind of like the way the world works kind of way. But I also genuinely have a spiritual connection through these ideas of like the way that um, archetypes work, you know, and the way that we understand stories and myths and um, uh, how embodying aspects of those can be a pathway to spirituality and personal development. Anyway, I'm not going to talk too much about that because it's a knitting podcast, but it's essential. it's part of who I am and this is part of who I am, so it's all kind of going to conglomerate here. If it's not your thing and you just want to see pretty knitting, cool bananas, that'll be here too. Um, but it's all kind of part of the way that I formulate my knitting practice and choose what I want to knit. So this became my Artemis shawl, and it obviously, you know, for anyone who's, you know, mildly familiar with um, uh, Artemis as a goddess, um, she's very much known as the goddess of the hunt and of, you know, the forests and, you know, a variety of other things. But, you know, for the short, short version, the, the green was really a big um, determiner for me. This is, I think, one of the more, um, like when you look at it, one of the more technical knits that I've done. And the ones that when you look at it, you go, whoa, like few people when I've worn this like I remember showing this to my mom and she was like how the fuck did you do that and I was like I don't know it was the pattern like um 
I am I am really really proud of this shawl I just think it's um, here I'm actually you can kind of see a little bit there see how these panels I'm wearing a dark color so it's not really the most um, but you can kind of see with the white background so you've got these beautiful long garter sections and then these stunning lace panels and I'm not going to say too much about how that works because it is a beautiful pattern and I highly recommend it um, and you know what um, I had never done anything like this and I wouldn't say that I'm um, I'd done a bit of like I'd done a little bit of lace I think at this point I had done lace on the cloudburst mitts which I've mentioned a few times here before I can't remember who it's by I think oh no it is it's by um, Ariane, Gra uh, Ariane Gray I may or may not put that in the description but it's been in all, nearly all of my videos so um, if you just type cloudburst into Ravelry or on Google I'm sure you'll um, be able to find those they're a free pattern so I've done them there but I wasn't like super duper like I wouldn't say I was an incredible lace work knitter um, but the pattern's really clear um, I don't even think I really had to rip back anything on this one it, it just the pattern was really really clear so I felt like I was able to do it. The instructions kind of made it very workable. And that, I'm just gonna keep showing you because I feel like sometimes people go really fast and you don't see it. Yeah, that's nice. So you can really see these beautiful panels. Um, that's actually quite a decent color representation too. I would definitely say it's, I mean, that's a bit blown out. It's quite, um, I'd say like, yeah, that's a good color representation. It is like a really deep foresty variegated green. I would say I've really been thinking about this a little bit. Um, if you can hear some clanking, that's my husband moving around in the background. I did tell him I was um, filming, so he's, you know, but we live in a little cottage, so you can hear other humans. Um, brain. I've been thinking about this a lot. I really like a tonal or a... Um, I believe the variegate is when there's more than one colour. I would almost say this does have... No, I mean, it really is a tonal, isn't it? But anyway, I think I think tonals are probably my favourite. I like, as you can probably see by everything I've bought. <laughs> um, I really like sock... I like speckles more for sock yarns, but I also do think I would like to try doing some colour work or some... Um, yeah, colour work with a variegated or tonal yarn. I think that looks really pretty. The grocery girls have done that a few times and that looks stunning. Um, but I also have, I do, I would really like to do like a speckled, an all over speckled, um, like a raglan sweater or a slipover or something. Like, um, again, grocery girls, Jodie has done, oh, a couple of her slipovers. There's one that she did recently and it was in like, I think it was in Sourpuss maybe, in what, which is a Frankie Grey Fibers colour, which is one of her, that's her company with, um, I think, her one of her children. And she, anyway, long story short, go check it out. But um, so cute. But then also there was a colourway that um, was Jodie's colour with, I think, La Bien-Aimé. La bien -Aimé. And I think it was called Jasper. Oh, and I think it was a colour work or a, um, an all-over sweater in that. I want one. <laughs> so I think it just depends. Sometimes I feel like I quite like simple color. Like I like an all over color. Like I like, I think I would wear more of those, but I think it just depends on the, I think it just depends on the colorway and it just depends on what I'm feeling that day. But I think I tend to gravitate in, the, in my early knitting, I bought all the speckled and variegated and I use them all. I've used them all for socks. Like I love using them for socks. More fluff on my face. But as far as like garments and stuff, I didn't knit this. But like as far as what I wear in my life, um, it's definitely, I definitely tend to go more tonal. Um, so I love this. I don't wear it as often as I should. So here's the thing. Okay, so I need you to help me. Okay. I need help with this. It's part of why I chose to wear this today. I, so, um, I, as I said, Artemis shawl, two things. One, the crescent shaped shawl is actually, I don't know, I, I feel a little, a little unsure about when I'm wearing it. Like it just doesn't feel as, 
um, the fleur shawl that I have, which I think I sh I don't know if I wore that in another one. I just find it easier to wear. Like there's something about this this shape that just um, I just don't feel like it sits quite in the way I want it to. It's fine, but I just feel like it's not um it doesn't I kind of have to fiddle with it a lot, and I'm not really into that. So suggestions would love any. I think maybe even a. Sh I don't know if I'd like a shawl cuff, but I thought maybe that could be something. I think it looks really lovely draped around. I think you really get to see the lace work pattern, so I'm pretty into that. But the other thing is, so when we're talking about like intention and kind of fusing stuff into a shawl, I really had this as a, my idea when I was creating this shawl was around, like I said, the goddess Artemis, this kind of protection, um, this kind of strong, I don't even know if I like the word strong, but this kind of like fierce, wild feminine energy, right? Like that's, and I'm saying feminine, not female, male. It's just that type of energy, right? But this kind of like um, fierceness and this kind of protective thing. So I don't know what I've done here. <laughs> and maybe, maybe I'm superstitious, right? I don't know what I've done here. But every time I've worn this in the world, something really intense has happened. And... If you're rolling your eyes, no stress, but this feels true for me, right? I've just had the most intense things happen. And so I find that I don't really wear this because I'm kind of like, what the is going on with this thing? Like, I don't know. I don't, and I'm, I probably wouldn't have said in the past that I'm particularly superstitious, but I think I actually am. <laughs> I do believe in energy. I do believe in energy, whether that's superstitious or not. I really believe in energy. I, I, Believe isn't quite the right word. It's just for me, there's so much evidence for that. And um, particularly in the kind of work I do, it's a big part of the work I do. So um, I just, I need some help. Like <laughs> we're going to reset this thing because I want to wear it in my life. And um, I'm still going to, I still want it to be my Artemis shawl, but I want to, I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm, I'm consciously choosing a different intention that it's still, it's not attracting the stuff where I need protection is where I think what's that's where I think energetically something something's moved on. So I actually um I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little out of order. But um this is a book that I purchased quite a while back. It's by Nikita Gill. It's a book of stories and, and poetry, great goddesses. If you're into poetry, even actually, even if you're not, you know what I mean? Like, but if you're, if you're hearing what I'm saying and you're even like mildly interested in like, even just like a 1% interested, go, go, go fast, go fast, pick this out. Um, anything I found Nikita Gill on Pinterest, actually, I think originally. And, um, also I just really like this color. Ooh. Um, and I just really resonated with a lot of her work. It has a very similar, it has kind of a similar essence to um, Women Who Run With The Walls by um, Clarissa Pinkola Estes. Um, I will attempt to remember to write these down below. Um, that's another excellent book that I read all the time. I'm actually currently listening to the audiobook. Um, and I've just gone through, and any ones that I particularly resonate with, I kind of earmark, um, but I, I mean, I definitely resonate with all of them. Um, I'm a little bit, my brain's like, why am I showing you this? Um, I just love it. I actually opened it just then to, um, the section that was Artemis. It was Athena and Artemis's contemporary manifesto. Oh, that was a good one. Um, the moon writes a love letter to Artemis. That's a good one. I'm trying to see if there's a, is a, a smaller one. Oh, I love this one. Okay. I'm going to read, I'm going to read this one. Skip forward if you wish, but if you're interested, um, now, I'm not going to pretend like I know all of the things about Artemis, but my understanding is that she's also known as the moon goddess. Hence the poem, the moon goddess. It's a nice little one. There is something moon soaked and dawn flavored about her. Something kissed by the wild and loved by lightning. She, the goddess of storm hunting and wolves and moonlight magic, 
She, the queen of the forest, a womanhood more, be more brutal than tragic. I just love that. I'm going to show you the... I just love that so much. So I am hereby <laughs> re-energizing this shawl and um, yeah. Do you know what? <gasps> I just realized something. Okay, so I'm like, if you just see for knitting, we're getting distracted, but it's fine. I just realized, so I, my brain wasn't thinking Artemis, like moon goddess, I was thinking more Artemis, you know, wolves, forests. So the other thing that I bought to show you today, and I did kind of think goddess wise, but I wasn't kind of thinking Artemis wise, is I also bought this, um, I've recently purchased a new, like a perfume roller. And um, I will write all this down below this part. So this is by um, Ananda. Ananda, I believe it would be Ananda, Ananda Life, which is from, Bi it's a Byron Bay company. And the name of the one that I chose is Luna. Bum, 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 bum. Um, which is, is centered as, so the, the, um, like the intention is freedom, but the scent is rose geranium, sandalwood, bergamot, lang lang, lemon, frankincense. And something else. Um, you know, it's funny, and because I can't really smell the rose geranium, like it has a very, I don't know, it's, it's a, what I like about it is it's a really lovely mix between um, herbal, like a herbal scent, which is definitely my favourite, but it has a floral, well, that's not true, floral would be my favourite, but it's, it leans herbal, like it's got a depth to it, like a, um, yeah. And it's all moon related. I'm very, I love, I love the moon. I love it. Okay, knitting. So that's that. <laughs> Been going for 27 minutes and I've told you about one thing. It's not even my finished object. Right. Buddy's decided to rejoin the podcast from behind the scenes. <laughs> I said to my husband, I'll probably be about an hour. 27 minutes in, haven't shown you half my stuff. Seriously, I haven't even started. Oh, God. Anyway. Well, I just started from the end because I was going to show you all my goddessy stuff at the end and I've shown it to you at the start. So, okay. Right. Moving on. Finish objects. I'm almost 100% sure this wasn't finished last time. Did I check? No, I didn't need to. This is my... Oh, I pulled a thread. Bummer. It's alright, I'll fix it. Um, this is my linen ranunculus. If you haven't heard me say it 10,000 bedillion times already, it's by Midori Hirose of Knit Cafe Midori. I knit size, I think I knit size 6. And um, it's in the colourway, it's in Quince & Co Kestrel in the colorway Hyacinth. And um, I don't know if I said this earlier, but the Kestrel is a 10 ply tape, 100% linen. I had a number of people say to me like, how, like, like what was it? I'm one curious about what it's like to knit with because um, everyone said that, like a lot of people have said that linen is really like rough on their hands. I'm like super sensitive to that. I don't really like knitting with cotton because I don't like the, it's funny, it's dry, but not in a wool dry. I quite like a dry wool, like a Rauma, I'm doing this, I like a Rauma or a, like a, I like a 100% wool or like a Brooklyn Tweed type dryness. Cotton, I just, there's a chalkiness to it that I cannot get over. Some of the garments are beautiful in cotton, but I cannot put myself through it. I just refuse. Linen, people have said that it's kind of like, I think when it's in the four ply, I can see how that would be hard because of just the, um, I can just, I can imagine that. The 10 ply in a tape yarn, I personally had not a single issue. Um, I've already worn this, 
and I will, I've probably worn it three or four times. I will continue to wear it. I was sneaky hoping that I'd be able to wear it without a tank top underneath. I knit this on a 6.5 needle, which is one needle size up from the recommended. I was concerned I wouldn't have enough yarn. I was incorrect about that. <laughs> so um, I still have nearly a whole ball. I bought seven balls. I should have written this down. I bought seven balls and I actually think I was going to need that if I had done the correct, if, if I had done the correct needle size, I think I would have been fine. I think I still would have had plenty left over. Um, but to be honest, it's not so much the gauge that I have the issue with around with the um, not wearing a singlet underneath. It's that the arm, for me, and I might have, this might be something that I might have not totally done correctly because I totally added more stitches here. I think I might have added some more stitches along here because I was concerned about the armhole. Um, it's very deep. Um, now, I very easily could seam this. And I have considered that. And I might do that in the future. Um, I could very easily seam a couple of stitches along there and just make them a bit smaller. But I'm not going to right now. <laughs> I'm not never going to do it, but I'm not going to right now. Um, another thing which I did but doesn't bother me, really. I mean, like, next time I would do it differently, but it doesn't bother me and I didn't go back to it, was I decided to do... A split hem which I am thrilled about actually I really like the way it looks I think I'm gonna do everything with a split hem pretty much from now on I just like them um, I just like I just like them um, but when you knit twisted rib in the round you just twist the like you knit through the back loop for the knits right if you're not sure what I'm talking about, feel free to go and look it up. But for those of you who are kind of following along, when you're knitting in the round, you just twist, you just knit in the back loop of your knits. Okay, so I forgot that when you knit flat, when you're on the, I'm not going to explain this very well, I don't think, but when you're on the right side, you knit through the back loop of the knits. But then when you're on the, the wrong side and you're going the opposite way, if you continue to knit in the back loop of your knits, you're kind of twisting, like you're alternating which one you're actually twisting. My friend is going, is anyone following this? I know what I'm saying. Anyway, point is, basically, every second row, I have a twisted knit stitch. <laughs> through and went why does this not look like I know it looks and then I realized my um my mistake and then I thought oh well like I f yeah I don't know I just don't think I just don't think it really matters I think it for I think if it was a, a garment that was like really really sleek and I think if it was one that was kind of um I don't know, like I just think this is such a relaxed garment that really it doesn't, it didn't really matter. <laughs> so I just left it. And I just did the same when I did the the front. I just kind of I just kind of continued the mistake and made it a design choice. <laughs> um would I do it differently next time? I think I would. I think I do like how it looks with the twisted rib. I'm not um I don't always love a triple twisted rib to be honest. There's times where I haven't done it where it's called for it, but I did actually think this would look nice here. I will a thousandy fifty bedillion. I'm really big on numbers today. Have you noticed? I'm a thousandy fifty bedillion going to make another one of these exactly the same um, in a light, like a white or a cream. I just think I would wear the shit out of that. Um, but I'm actually loving the purple. I'm wearing it with my jeans. Do you know what? I think this is the first episode I've ever knit where I'm not wearing jeans. I'm just wearing leggings. I'm just comfy. Um, but... I was just thinking about that. I think it's definitely the episode I've ever done. But yeah, I've been wearing it with jeans, jean shorts. I think I could wear this with a, like a light skirt. It looks so pretty if I had like a white skirt or something. That'd look really nice. So I actually couldn't be more happy with that. It's really my first summery knit. I don't think I've really knit anything else that I could wear in the summer. Um, the rift top was on the thing. I'm going to have to stop talking about that. I'm going to, um, that's like on a long-term pause. 
don't expect to continue to see that one anytime soon. Um, if I do decide, I'm almost 100% sure I'm going to rip it back. I'm going to knit the Rift tee. I think I'd like to knit it in this or something similar. Or maybe in like a cotton merino. I'm t I don't know whether, because I have my thing around cotton, I wonder if I had a cotton merino, whether it would take out the chalkiness for me. We'll see. I like the Madeleine Tosh, um, I think it's vintage that's their cotton merino. I like the feel of that. So I think that'd be fine. So I might do a Rift tee in that, because I think that'd be really pretty. They have a colour called Pink Clay, and I think that'd be really cool. So I, I do want to knit the Rift tee, because I think it's beautiful, but I just think that's not the yarn for it. And then with the True Boo, I'm, I feel like I could probably get through a, um, like a top-down raglan tee. I think I could possibly do that. So maybe, 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 maybe. Could not be more happy with that. Truly, I think it's actually one of my favourite things I've knit. And I love the colour. I've knit a lot of grey sweaters recently, so I'm trying to transition to some colour-y things. So I love it. Right. Whips. Where to start? First coffee. I have a few whips. I'm just casting on whatever I feel like at the moment. Um, with my new job, I'm not getting a lot of knitting time just in the last... Well, I've only started in the last little week and a half. But um, this week, I'm still transitioning and I'm driving a lot. It's like an hour and 15 to my job because it's um, remotely located. And... So when I get home, I've just been busted. <laughs> like I just come home, comatose on the couch. The other day I watched Amy Palco and that was like the most relaxing thing ever. I almost like, was like nodding off and I was like, oh, this is so lovely, so soothing. Um, but honestly, most days I haven't had, I haven't, haven't even had the energy to turn on the television. Like I'm just, I'm just like, I've been very lucky. My sweet husband's been cooking dinner and I literally just pack up dinner and just fall into bed. I want some sunshine coming out. I haven't seen sunshine for a couple of days. So, and I have some plans for knitting. So when I do my acquisitions, I've got some ideas. So I think that might even help with that. So basically, I've pretty much given my position, myself permission to, to knit whatever the heck I feel like. And if I have to cast on 45 things, it's not the end of the world. Um, I don't think it's quite going to come to that. But for me, I would rather have... I'm not normally like a bedillion whip person, but I'm really liking bedillion too. I'm not normally a person who has millions of whips, but I would rather have multiple projects. I would, I, I think I'm in a stage with a few of them where it's like, I don't have the brain power for some of this stuff. So I'm just not going to knit. And then it means I would just wouldn't knit at all. And I don't, I can't, I can't just not knit at all. So I've got to have something to knit off. So, Speaking of the sweet Amy Palco, oh, did I not bring that in? Oh yeah, I did. In my bed of roses bag, which is a little fluffy from Buddy sleeping with it today. Bed of roses bag. Um, all of the bed of roses bags that I will be showing today, I was generously gifted. But I'm using the shit out of them because they're freaking pretty and I like them. So, um... I was tossing up whether I was going to show this, but I need to be, <laughs> I can't do it. I, my brain went, maybe I should just wait. And then I thought, nah, we got to be, we got to be upfront and honest. So Amy and the, and um, lovely Rebecca from the Crayer Bay app were kind of banding around the idea of a lento cow. <laughs> and my brain was like, I really want to do the lento cow. But then I cast one on <laughs> and I was like, you can't. Do that unless like I don't think it's gonna be a whips loud type scenario and if it is great I'll join in but to be honest even if it's not I'm still joining in but I won't like officially join in like do you know what I mean because I get that there are rules and that's got to be how it works so I cast one on <laughs> I'm just gonna start knitting it in my head I'm part of the cow but I won't actually like I won't enter into the cow does that make sense like I'm not gonna also I keep thinking it sounds like I'm saying cow Cal knit along if they decide to do one because I don't think it's officially started I have I have tried to google to kind of like feel like I'm 
in the imagine imaginary cow that I've got going on with Amy and Rebecca. <laughs> I've started. Um, so if they do decide to run one, I just won't be part of it officially, but I'm like, in my head, I'm part of it. I'm part of it socially. So I have started the Lento. Do you know what? I didn't actually write down who that was by either. I've got it written here. Um, it was published in, in a liner magazine. I will put it down below. Yep. Yep. <laughs> That's what's happening there. So I, in my beautiful package from Bed of Roses, she very, Catherine very generously given, gifted me six balls of this beautiful alpaca linen, which is an alpaca linen. No, really, Alex? Um, <laughs> yarn. It's deliciously fluffy. I'm trying to work out the best way to show you this. Anyway, six balls of this. And I was like, Whoa. so I swatched. I think I mentioned it last episode. I swatched. I was looking at holding it single. It was beautiful. I think like a cumulus blouse could have been stunning. But I was really... I wanted a lento. I wanted to be part of the imaginary cow. <laughs> so then I swatched it again and I actually had, as some of you guys might remember, I had some biche et bouche um, le petit lamb's wool in light grey. I actually have a couple of colours left over, but I had two of these left over from another project that I made, the Bright Side Sweater by Spastrico. Which I think I showed at some point. And if I haven't showed it yet, I will have shown it in my look at all the shit I made episode where I talk about all my sweaters, which I think will come out after this. I pre-recorded it. So I think it will come out after this. So if you haven't seen it yet, it's coming, but I'm pretty sure I've shown it. So I decided to hold those two together and God, It is so good. Like, oh, it's gonna be so squishy. So when I was a kid, um, we if we had like a really squishy or snuggly jumper, my mum used to call them a huggy jumper because it just makes you want to hug the person. <laughs> I feel like this is my huggy jumper. It is. I don't think I don't think there's a person who could find this scratchy. I'd be surprised, maybe, but I'd be surprised. It is so ridiculously soft. <laughs> is that my um? <laughs> I just thought, is this my is this my little thumbnail? <laughs> no, it's not my thumbnail. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to work out a cuter one later. Um, I made the choice. So I've seen a lot of people make some lentos, grocery girls. Cray Bear, Amy Palco, who else made one? Um, Lily from Lily Untangled, who also will be chatting about her a bit later as well. Um, and I've seen a couple of variations with the folded neckline, which I love. And also the, um, the like just normal, single, single folded, not a thing, the single neckline. And I was very torn. I was very torn. I made the call for me that I love the way the folded neckline looks like from a design perspective, but on my body, I am, I ha like, I think I've said this in every single episode. I am a larger human being. I'm in a larger body. I have a 125 centimeter bust. And my concern was, is I didn't want it to look like, I didn't want it to be really close up to my neck. Like I don't tend to like my sweaters to be that way. I tend to like to be able to wear a shawl if I need one, but I generally like, I don't mind it being kind of like up there, but I like it being a little bit wider. And my concern with the um, folded neckline was that it was kind of going to look a little bit like constricted. <laughs> and I've seen some of them where they look super chunky and I just didn't think that was going to suit me. I think if it was a, I think a folded neckline, if it was like maybe a four ply could probably work for me where it's going to sit a little flatter or even maybe a DK where it's going to sit kind of flat. But I just kind of, I don't know. I just didn't feel like on my, I love the way they look. I love Lily's. She did it the most beautiful one where um, it's like a, a, 
uh, contrast colour on the inside of the band. That was beautiful. I just didn't feel like it was going to suit what I would wear and how I was going to wear it. Because the other thing is I definitely think I'm going to wear this, again, say this for pretty much everything that I ever wear, with like a white collared shirt underneath sometimes, particularly for work and stuff. Um, I really love that look. So I wanted a kind of wider um, neckline, so I decided to go for the single. I think I'm happy with it. I thought I went back and forth a little bit. I think I'm happy with it. I think I'm going to leave it. Um, now, my current issue. My gauge is a little bit big. So I think I measured this morning. It's The gauge is 15 stitches per 4 inches. Wait, 15, yeah, 15 stitches per, per 4 inches. I've got seven inches, no, oh, seven stitches for a two inch, so 14 stitches. And so just slightly, just slightly big. And then I feel like I'm a little bit in between sizes because there's one size that's 127 bust measurement. And then there's one, I think it's 139. Yeah, 139. The pattern recommends approximately 12 centimeters. I'm going backwards between centimeters and inches. This is really, if, if you're not an inches person, if you're not in America, you might have experienced this where your brain can't quite keep track of which dimensions it's in. If you've got a good way to do this, <laughs> I cannot work it out. So I go forward back and forward. It works in my brain, but it just makes it a little overcomplicated. Long story short, it's just not quite right. The, the 139 will be quite big, will be quite big on me. I don't think I need it to be that big because my bust is definitely my biggest measurement and the rest of my body is smaller than that. So I feel like if I do the 139, if I'm giving enough ease for my bust, it's going to be huge. But if I do the 127, I'm worried it's kind of not going to be big enough. It'll be big enough. <laughs> anyway, I'm on the fence about how that's looking. So I'm currently, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it on. That's kind of what stopped me this morning. And this is where my brain is at. I don't have the, I don't have the brain capacity to work this shit out. So I have paused just for the short term. I might work it out this afternoon, but let's be honest, probably not. When I get a burst of inspiration to be able to work down and map this out, I will. I'm going to try it on. It's a little hard before you split the sleeves, though, to try it to really get a good gauge. But I'm going to I'm going to try it on. And then what I think I might do is I think I might go a little rogue and try and work out. Because I've seen, again, Lily, I've watched Lily do this where she works it out. And I believe I can do it. So I'm going to just kind of work it out and work out if I'm going to do another repeat and maybe just not do the, not increase quite to the 139 bus circumference and kind of just try and go in the middle, but also work out with my gauge, what am I actually at? Because I reckon I couldn't end up being in that middle zone anyway. Anyway, long story short, fucked if I know. But I love it. I love it. Couldn't be more thrilled with it. Um, I think I'm going to wear the crap out of it. I know it's another grey sweater and I've got a few of those. But honestly, I really love a grey sweater. Because then I wear a whole bunch of colourful um, accessories. My next sweater I do think will be a colour work one. No promises. But I am thinking about it. Right. One whip. Two whips. Again. Oh gosh, look, I've got my tag on still. <laughs> I've just been using them. I just literally pulled them out, put stuff in it, and just like, away we go. Um, if you're noticing fluff on them, it's because I am using them in my real life and I have a very fluffy cat. This is my other bird of roses bag. I have three now. In this is my Astrid socks. Bye. Oh yeah, look, this is the amount of, um, my bags aren't very, look how much yarn I had left over from that tea. I think I'm going to knit something that uses in the same yarn that has a contrast colour and use this as a contrast colour because otherwise I have no idea what I'm going to use this for. Any suggestions other than that, I'm totally open for it. But I've got almost a full ball here. So, yeah. So, I've got some Astrid socks. 
if you can hear the, the stuff in the background, that's my husband heating up some food. Because <laughs> I told him an hour and I'm already at 50 minutes. These are the Astrid stocks. Alex, you've said that three times. Bye. Sorry, Nordland. I like her patterns, a lot of them. I'm in the mood for colour work, which is hilarious because I've also just finished telling you how I don't have a lot of brain capacity. But I also think that um, I often need something that if my brain is kind of going around an idea or if they're, um, um, if I'm kind of, yeah, I don't know, if I'm kind of stuck in work mode, I find it really helpful to have something that's like three, one, two, one, four, three. And just kind of, it's like a real, um, I find that very, very helpful. So, I don't know, I'm going to show it again because I don't know how well I really held that up. Isn't that pretty? I haven't done a pair of colourwork socks before. But so far, so good. Like mittens, but long and with toes. Um, I'm knitting it with, so this is Artful Bell. I can't remember the colorway and I've tried looking it up on a Spastrico. I did buy it from a Spastrico, but there's a very, very, very similar color by uh, an Australian Sydney dyer called Giacomo. And she has a color that's very, very similar. I think it's called like rose pink and I bought that one and I've knit a pair of socks in that and I love it. This one, I think that was a 75-25, the Giacomo one. This is an 80-20. Um, so like I said, it's an Artful Bell, bought it from a Spastric Co, possibly with this batch of stuff. This tends, I buy a lot of this colour, <laughs> I've noticed, but I, and as you will see, pink is a bit of a theme for me at the moment, but to be honest, at the moment is not a thing, just in general, love pink. Um, yep, so that's that one. And then I've got Glen Heaven Knits in Old Man's Beard. Another one that's very, very similar to this is, um, the Three Cats Yarn Calico. I say similar because they're not the same um, and I definitely feel like the different bases could be used for, in different ways but they're both beautiful but this one I had for my color cray shawl um, I wonder if you can see I really love in this one there are these little um, like slightly rusty flecks I like that I feel like I should always have one of these for color work because it's the most perfect white because it's not too yellow and it's not too gray it's a really lovely tone and it is dyed it's not a natural it is dyed to be the way that it is i remember um i remember having the conversation and i just think it creates really lovely color work this is really yeah i don't know i'm into it i just feel like i should always have them because i can totally see having a beautiful base color and then just having the white for the color work so that makes me happy. Um, I'll be honest. So here's why I stopped this one <laughs> this morning. I'm worried I don't have enough of this. I'm a little concerned. I'm going to weigh it because I do have a little uh, scale. I'm concerned that maybe I don't have enough to do the two socks. I should do. I can't actually logically think about why I wouldn't. I originally used this for a panel on a Vertices Unite shawl and then ripped it out. I love the pattern, didn't end up loving my colour palette for that. I do want to knit another one of, that, of those at some point. Um, I actually think that that'd be a really nice way to use up the Bichet Bouche scraps that I have from my bright side sweater. Maybe buy a couple of different colours. I think that'd be really, really pretty. Um, I just didn't love the colour palette I have. I didn't even really like the... I was knitting it up in a Madeline um, Mad Tosh light. And I actually just didn't love the way that that was knitting up for that shawl. I don't know. Plenty of people have knitted in that. It just wasn't kind of, I don't know, it just wasn't doing it for me. Um, I think I felt like it needed more wooliness, to be honest. So I'm thinking about using the Bichet Bouche for that. Oh, I'm just losing feeling in my feet. Um, oh, needles <laughs> for some reason. So anyway, I'm going to keep knitting it. Um, I actually, the, these are actually, the pattern has a sh has an afterthought heel and I've never done one before and I think I'm going to do one. Now my understanding is it's not a true afterthought heel because you do put in waste yarn. I'm, I think I'm going to try it. But the only thing with that is, and this is where, this is what it'll come down to really, is do I run out of knitting? 
And do I have the brain power to do all of that? Or do I just go, I can just chuck a heel slap and gusset in and be done? <laughs> That'll be what it comes down to. So I could end up doing a heel slap and gusset for this purely because my brain already knows how to do that. And I, I feel like because I'm learning so much. P.S. I'm sure somebody will ask them what the new job's going great. Like really, I'm not going to talk much about, I think I've shared in the past. I don't, um, I'm not at the point where I feel like I want to talk about what I do. I'm just not sure if I want to mix those two worlds right now. But the, um, the job itself is going really great. It's a really lovely team, beautiful work environment. But for anyone who's ever started a new job, it's like a lot of brain power and it's a lot of, you know, you're taking a lot of new information. To be honest, even just working out how to get there every day sometimes is a bit of a, it's an hour and a half, like an hour and a quarter drive. So it's like a full, a lot of brain capacity being used. Um, so I might just not do that. Really at the moment, this my knitting currently isn't about stretching my skill set. I'm I'm not in that phase. I'm really in a comfort knit phase, and I'm in a um, therapeutic knit phase, which is almost always where I am anyway. To be honest with you, like that's my primary primary knitting gear. But you know, every once in a while, I go, oh, I want to learn a new technique, or I don't know. So that's where I'm at. Um, I also realized that I was 100% going to, I had this idea that I was going to show you some of the patterns that I was going to do. How am I going to do that if I'm talking to my phone? <laughs> I said, the cat's going, oh, I won't write that down because I'll just show you on my phone. I'll show you a picture on Instagram. How? How am I going to do that? I'm talking to my phone. <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> anyway. So yeah, we'll just see how this goes. I'm just gonna pick it up as I go. The other thing I'm thinking about doing is I'm thinking about putting this on waist yarn or on a, on a cord and just knitting the same thing again and then dealing with the rest of it later. Because I could always, I could always um, do contrast. I think the pattern itself has contrast cuffs, toes and heels. I just liked this, I liked it being simple. And there's also little, um, I forget what they're called. I know it translates to fleas. What's it called? L-O, I can think of the spelling in my head, but I can't think of the pronunciations. L-O-P-P-E, fleas? Can't remember what they're called. Work brain, work. No, I don't remember. You're all screaming it. It's like, an, again, episode of Blue's Clues. <laughs> You're all screaming it at me, particularly if you're from any kind of, um, any kind of country that, that the translation of fleas comes from any kind of Scandinavian country, you're probably screaming it at me. Um, but you know what I'm talking about, those beautiful little flecks, you know? So I'm tossing up whether I'm going to do those or whether I'm just going to keep it super duper simple. I'm on the fence. But there's too many decisions to make. I don't know what is going on here. Does so anyone else's like, bag just do that? Like, these were all beautiful before. Anyway, chuck them back in there. Sounds like a future Alex problem. Don't always do that, but today that's what we're doing. So yeah, I'm just tossing up what I'm doing with that, but I've really enjoyed knitting those. Very, very pleasant. Now, finally, and I know there's going to be some of you that are like, Alex, is this really a whip? But I kind of just want to keep accountable that I did. So I had these Bobby Dazzlers by Kerry Malley. Knit in Rauma, light pink, light grey. I think I put the actual codes in my last Either, I think I put them in the last podcast. Right. But I said, I'm not going to cast on the next one. I'm going to just like wait a little bit, but I'm pretty good at doing it. So I did. I've only got the cuff and some of you are going to be horrified because it's just totally a whole bunch of live stitches. I'm just like a real, I'm like a really wild at the moment. Um, I have got the cuff. <laughs> the stitches are wild because then I decided I wanted to, um, I wanted to cast on the sock. So um, you're getting a little picture into where my knitting practice is at the moment. It's a little bit instant gratification. It's a little bit whatever, <laughs> whatever goes. I'm not, I, I would say that's unusual, but I'm okay with it because it's within the season of where I'm at in my life at the moment. So I'm not super stressed about it. Um, I'm just letting the practice kind of come to me and move me where it will. And I'm just, surrendering to the process so but they are happening they are happening and I think that if 
there's a good chance oh yeah that's because i couldn't be bothered that's right that's why i decided to do that instead of these i couldn't be bothered to deal with the whole le increase <laughs> which i am so aware is a bit as a bit like i'm really rationalizing there i just couldn't be bothered to deal with the make one left make one right cbf um so <laughs> So I said I'd just cast on an entire new project, but the needles that I was making these on, I needed for those. So I also probably do need to buy a few more sock needles. Um, 2.5s and 2.75s are pretty much my sock and glove needles, um, respectively. So, oh, that's where that is. Good. So I need to probably do that. So I just wanted to be accountable. I have cast them on. They are in the works. They do have their own Bed of Roses project bag. So they're on the list. Right. We're doing well. It's only been an hour only. Um, for those of you who are interested, I did a live a little while ago and this is the mug I was referring to. I kept saying whether I was gonna buy this mug. Look how cute it is. I'm trying to show it to you without spilling my coffee. As if I wasn't gonna buy that. 20 bucks. Oh, it might've been 30, but anyway. I was on the fence about whether I was going to buy the mug and everyone said buy the mug. So I did. Isn't that cute? I'm going to buy another one. I feel like I need, I feel, I feel like I need some like a matching pair. Um, okay. I have a shit ton of acquisitions. So again, if now's a great time to pause, get a coffee, get a tea, something a little spicier if you're into that. Um, Maybe it's, maybe it's boiling hot where you are right now and it's like, I'm going to have an iced tea or a lemonade or something. You go nuts. Do you know this is my third coffee of the day? It's like 9.30. <laughs> I did wake up at 6 though. I've been getting up super early at the moment. Um, so I have quite a few acquisitions. So if it's not your thing, cool bananas. I'll catch you next time. Um, and if it is... I'm going to do my magician thing. It's not going to look pretty, but I'll do my magician. Buddy's wandered off some. Oh, he's behind. Oh, he hasn't. Look. That's very cute. I thought he'd wandered off. No. Do you know what he's bought up? Oh, that's really sweet. Am I sitting on it? Can I get it out? Okay. I don't know if I've shown you this before. I don't think so. Do you mind if I show them all? Or are you going to get up? Okay, so years and years ago, I just found this again recently. We bought Buddy this fish on a stick. Nothing exciting, right? I mean, like, cool, but, you know, if you're a cat. But not, not you know, I bought him better toys. Is <laughs> pretty much the short version of this. Five bucks from Kmart. Buddy loves this fish. He, I've, I've taken a video of them. He loves this fish. He brings this fish around with him. So it's attached to this giant stick. Buddy will put the fish in his mouth and drag the whole stick through the house. <laughs> and I, he's brought it up and sat it on the bed with him here. He must have done it earlier before um, before the thing today. Yeah, that's your fishy. Here you go. I love your fishy. Um... He drags the entire, the entire thing. And I remember the first time he did it, I honestly, I, I had tears rolling down my face. I was laughing so hard. And so he carries it around the house with him. Like if we're on the couch, he will bring us the fish on the stick. And he'll just, you can hear the whole stick going. <laughs> through the house. He also has these really cute little, little mice that he used to, he does carry around the mice, which is probably where he started the behavior is he does carry the, the mice from place to place. But the fish on the stick just takes the cake. <laughs> Actually, we were even we were in bed last night, and all of a sudden, I could hear like the I could hear a rattling. Like it, every time I rolled over, I could hear the rattling. It was because he'd put one of his mice toys in the bed somewhere. He's like left them there for us. He's very um. He he definitely thinks we're like stupid cats who can't take care of ourselves because he leaves us presents of these little pretend mice, and he brings us his favorite fishy. Look, can you see that? He's like cuddling it. So cute. Alright, so we'll have to see how we go with the whole yarn thing. Okay, so first, when I first, 
started this podcast a little while ago. The beautiful Lily of Lily Untangled, who if you haven't watched, go, go forth, sent me a message and she was like, look, I don't know how to tell you this and I hope I don't seem weird, but like, I'm pretty sure we're friends. <laughs> and I remember reading it being like, okay, cool. Seems, seems reasonable and legit. Um, and she's like, I hope this doesn't seem weird, but like I've watched all the episodes. I feel like we know each other. And I was like, okay, I don't really know who you are. Then I watched her episodes and I was like, you know what? We are friends. I'm totally, I'm sure about that also. Anyway, so we got to talking and the beautiful Jackie and Carmen of Knitting a Good Yarn podcast are hosting a cow called Inspired by Ellen. Most of you have probably heard of this. It's centered around their love for knitted and yarn, although you don't need to participate in knitted and yarn, but they have this love of knitted and yarn. And then also this pattern that um, was, it's a free motif that a beautiful woman named Ellen translated into a jumper, like a sweater. And so basically their idea was if we take this free motif and we like hand it out to everyone, it's this beautiful motif, how can we use our creativity to like integrate this into a variety of patterns? So the, the, the cal is about using the motif in some way, shape or form. So there's no official pattern. There's no yarn that you have to use. It's just integrating this pattern, like this color work motif into a pattern of some description. So you can do socks, you can do a hat, you can do a scarf, you can do a full color work jumper. You can do like a raglan with it, the thingy along the bottom. It's basically a choose your own adventure. First of all, they're the sweetest. <laughs> I really enjoy watching them. And Jackie has saved my entire thing. Remember I told you about my issue with like sleeves? So Jackie told me this thing, told me, told us, the humans, um, that when you try on your sweater, you have to bend your arms. <laughs> like we don't all walk around like this, like cats without bending our arms. So in, you can't just try on your sweater and be like, okay, cool, that's how long it is. You've got to be able to go like this. Okay, cool. If I'm like in the world, moving my arms about like a human, where do they sit? That's going to save me so much time ripping back because anyway. So I love those guys. And they also have a really beautiful, they have a lot of intention and care and um, practice behind how they knit. So I love that. Why am I telling you this story? So then, okay. So then Lily was like, we're chatting. And she's like, hey, look, I have an idea. <laughs> Would you let me send you some knitted and yarn just as a friend present? And if you wanted to join in the cow, you can. And I was like, dude, you're all the way in America. Like, that's a lot. Like, like that's so sweet of you. And she's like, just, just basically we, we, we friend argued and she was like, just let me send you the freaking yarn. She didn't say that, but like, that's kind of where it got to. And I was like, okay, I guess I'm mean, like, sure. <laughs> like, I'm not saying no. Okay. So I got the most beautiful package just the other day. Care of Buddy. It actually says that on the thing. Well, I just broke some off. Whoops. Not too much. Where's my other card? What happens when you have to hide your stuff from cats? There is the card. Oh, so cute. Really, I had your high five card. It was right here. Okay. It's a bit sad. So Lily wrote me the most beautiful card. And I just want to show you because it had this really cool graphic on it. I had a high five. It was like, oh yeah, there it is. Look, high five. Isn't that cute? So that was so sweet. That's by Blackbird Letterpress, by the way. Um, so she sent me the most beautiful package, Care of Buddy, with an entire plate. She's like, oh, I'll just, I'll just send you a little bit so you can put in a little bit of colour. Just send you a little bit. Oh, the cat. Oh dear. Move the kitten. 
And she's like, I just have to say that a little bit. Um, yeah, so she just sends me like an entire plate <laughs> of Nujin and yarn. You can't have the yarn. You can sit down, that's fine. Good boy. He's just gonna sleep here. That's totally okay. He's sitting on top of all the knitted products, but that's fine. Look! Oh, it's so cute. That might be my, that might be my, is this my? Maybe, probably not. Anyway, now, my understanding is this colorway is in Stila. But don't quote me on that because I can't. It was just off the top of my head. I was trying to remember that. So I am new to the concept of knitting and yarn. Not new, but like this is the first one I've ever touched. <laughs> um, my understanding is they only make colorways once. It's from Sweden. It's unspun. It's all very homegrown and amazing. My understanding is they only make colorways once. So Stila is this combination of, and I'll show you up close, but there's this, like a real rich, almost bright, there's like a teal, like a bright teal blue, kind of a mid blue, and then these kind of brownie grays. I'm hoping you'll be able to see it pretty well in the light. Mm. That's definitely making it look more purple than it is. I feel like it's more, it makes it look more pur purpley blue. I would say it's more tealy blue in person, but beautiful, just beautiful. And so I was inspired, to be honest, a little bit by Lily, but a little also by Carmen in um, from Knitting a Good Yarn podcast. That actually, like, I thought new the whole Newton thing was a little bit, um, it felt a little bit scary and it felt like it was going to be super expensive and impossible to get. And I don't know, I just felt like there was a lot of mystery surrounding the whole thing. And I felt a little bit overwhelmed, so I just never did it. I've actually ordered, it's coming. I'll show you next time, because I'm sure it'll be here next time. I've ordered five, so each one of these is approximate, well, each one of these is about 100 grams. It's all very approximate because it is, it's, it's all really home done. How oh, cool. Um, brain is just like flowing in and out <laughs> so I bought this car oh yeah I told you about it last week a lot last time it's called Yera and I did find out I think it is called Yera I think my instincts were on the money um it's this beautiful cool pink but I so I was just yeah I don't know I was feeling really, really like oh I don't know about it anyway I can see myself becoming very quickly addicted to this I get it I get it I haven't even knit with it yet I get it it was really reasonably priced. Like I bought 500 grams of the Yera. I think it cost me about 100, maybe 120 Australian dollars for like a pretty much a sweater's quantity. I'll have to check because I am a bigger, bigger body. If you're going to hold it double, 500 grams might be, I think I suggested a few different things I've seen when you're, when, when you're holding it double, that I might need about 600. So that's a slight shame. I'm hoping that that's not the case. Otherwise, I could hold it single, which I have to test out if that's actually going to be possible, or I hold it with a mohair, or I hold it with something else. But the Yera colorway is just the most stunning. Like I haven't seen it in person, but I could like it was the most Alexi colorway. I mean, any pink really, but like they don't do a lot of pinks, so I think the fact that they did one, it was just like a sign from the universe that. I was going to need it. Um, and you know what? Actually, I wrote down what Yera, I think, did I talk about it last time? I really looked into what Yera meant. It's a rune. I looked into what it meant because I want, I'm going to use that as a real intention behind what I make. When I get it, I'll, I'll come back and share that if I haven't already. I can't remember what I shared last podcast. It feels like a thousand years ago. But my idea is one of two things is um, I may use this for some color work in a sweater with the era because can you imagine a cool pink with this blue <gasps> stunning or I may use this with some of the unspun roving that I have from the Nundal wool mill 
not sure how the two textures will go together, but I might do that and look at doing some Inspired by Ellen because I think that runs till January next year. So I've got plenty of time if I want to get part of that. And I think that would kind of create like, you know, um, you know, like the blue and white china that you get, like that Dutch, like the Delft ceramic wear, thinking that that's going to be a bit of a vibe. Um, I love blue and white china. Um, I own a reasonable amount of blue and white painted china, I, either either in the Dutch kind of variety or in the um, kind of Japanese kind of variety, a bit of both, probably a bit of English stuff too, but like I like blue and white china. Um, this is just <laughs> very peaceful. And I'm finding myself getting distracted about the fact that this is actually a podcast that people are watching. I'm just kind of enjoying <laughs> sitting here talking about my art. So Lily sent me this. Thank you, Lily. That was so kind. And I'm very excited for my little cake. And she popped a couple of cute little goodies in there. So I haven't opened this yet because I want to put it in my car and I'm going to find out what it smells like. But I thought I could, I'm going to sniff it while I'm here. So this is a little... A little um, car sniffer. Ooh. Wow. Oh my gosh, they got a playlist. I'm going to do that. Um, this is the National Park Foundation. This is what America smells like. It's all I can work. That's what I'm going to assume here. Um, Acadia? Acadia National Park. I don't even know what I can tell you. That smells like, it kind of smells like a very pleasant woodsy aftershave. I'm gonna put that in my car. Isn't that sweet? Do you know what? You could even put that with your knitting and scent all your yarn. Yeah, it's kind of got like a cedary, but like a little, I don't know, it's got like a really nice, it's really like a really nice aftershave. So that was lovely. And um, a little au natural, this is actually what it's called, um, lip balm by. Twist, twist, twist. Hello, buddy. Buddy's like, what are you doing? Can you smell it too, bud? Hey? I love all these little nose sniffers. Do you want to sniff it? Hmm, yeah. Oh, that's a really sniffy little nose. So thanks, Lily. That was the sweetest. I just love it. Right, and then it was my birthday. I think I filmed on my birthday last time. Thanks everyone for your birthday wishes too. I'm 20 freaking nine. Holy shit. So I got yarn. So I got some yarn. So first I got, and I really tossed up whether I was going to do this. I got some La Bien Aimé Cory Worsted. <laughs> Now this is a bit of a splurgeroo because this is very, I would say this is in the luxury yarn category. So it's a, well, there's a bit of debate actually about whether this is actually worsted or DK. It does look kind of DK, doesn't it? I think you could do it a bit both. I got the colors, French gray. I'd say that's pretty accurate. High Garden, which is actually better than I thought it was going to be. It's like the most Alexi colour ever. And, and this is, I love this more than I thought I could. Oh, Buddy's running. Can you hear my washing machine in the background? Buddy loves when the washing machine button goes off. He like goes and tells us all that the washing's finished. Like he meows at us like, quick, the washing's done. Um, I love this way more than I thought I would. This is Winterfell. I'd say that's reasonably accurate. It has probably a, a more of a teal than a than a navy. Um, it's not kind of showing up as teal as it is in person. But when I say teal, it is like a navy teal, but God, it's beautiful. I would like a sweater in this, please. And I'm not a big I'm not a big navy blue wearer, but I think this would just be. Well, that's a little bit better. I think this would be beyond beautiful. So I'll be honest, I bought this and I think I am still gonna do it. I bought these and I think some of you would have seen it on Instagram 
to make a, and I'm going to say this incorrectly because I was going to show it to you and know the name. And now I don't. I don't know. I think I thought I was, I think, I think I thought I was the grocery girls who like film it on an iPad so they've got their phones. I'm not that. I'm going to make the Cecropia. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Cow. It's got a beautiful moth on it. You would have seen it if you're following me on Instagram, which is at the knitting, at the Serenity Knitting Society podcast. At, no, it says at the Serenity Knitting Society. That's it. You would have seen, I asked, I said, I'm knitting this. It's probably the first pattern ever that I've just looked at it and impulse bought it. I've never done that ever until I saw this. I can't remember the designer's name. I didn't write it down because I thought I was going to show you. <laughs> Delightful. Um, so I'm thinking I'm going to knit. I want to knit it. There's two versions. There's a there's a one where it's like dark, the dark color all the way through, and the light color is the color work. I'm going to do that version. So I'm going to do the blue for the main color. Then the contrast color could be the French gray, or it could be the pink. I'm leaning towards this option. And when I say leaning, I'm casting on this afternoon. <laughs> Fuck the millions of whips, I don't care. Um, I do what I want. <laughs> so this is what I want. I'm pretty sure I'm going to do this. But can I be honest? There's a little part of me that goes, I want this for a sweater. And I want like maybe a third, like a fourth colour. Maybe a, maybe a, I don't know. And I'm like, so there's a little part of me that goes, I don't, this is such beautiful and to be honest, expensive yarn. There's a little part of me that wants to just use it for a, a sweater but I think I'm not going to do that because I think we could all hold on to yarn for a rainy day and never use it and I do really I would really love to make this cow I think it'd be beautiful my only concern is too is I don't know how often I would wear a cow that's just a one loop I'm a little that's my actual that's my genuine concern is I don't know practice stunning it's the most beautiful pattern I've seen in a bedillion years bedillion is my word of the day but I'm a little I don't know how often I would really wear it um, from a like practicality point of view. The design is incredible. I would wear the shit out of that. But from a practicality point of view, I'm just a bit unsure. Anyway, I'm going to take a leap of faith. I liked how Jackie was talking today about trusting life. I'm just going to do that. And I'm just going to knit what my original gut feeling intuition is telling me, which is knit the freaking cow. And that there's going to be more yarn. That it's okay and one day I can, you know, I'm going to, you know, even if I just buy one little guy at a time or save up and put money aside, it's going to be okay. So, amazing. This is a Falkland, Corriedale and Gotland mix. 75 Falkland, Corriedale, 25 Gotland wool. I have never used either of those and I'm telling you, <laughs> I have so much fluff in my face. <laughs> I am obsessed. This is beautiful. I get it. <laughs> I, I get the price tag. I kind of get it. This pink, I would like an entire sweater in this pink. Which, actually, moving on. I kind of have, actually. Um, oh, yeah, so I bought that from Sunspun. And I also bought for that... Um, I bought one skein of 100% alpaca from Juniper Moon Farm. This is their Harriet base, pure exafine, non-mulesed, non-mulesed, mulesed, non-mulesed non baby alpaca. Um, 100%. And I am turning this into a Stokie scarf. I might also instead, depending on how I'm feeling, I could actually cast this on this afternoon. I feel like I need another Stokie scarf. I feel like I need a pink one. Um, I'm gonna wear that. Uh, I haven't actually worn my other one yet, but I should probably wear it this week. But I just really felt like I needed a pink one, and I wanted one in alpaca. And um, yeah, there's no. I, I'm trying to like tell you like I have a good reason. I don't just want one. I just wanted one. I think I'll wear the crap out of it. Um, and I loved that pattern. I really did. It was so soothing, manageable, like super polished looking. I'm 99% sure this will be for me. 
there's a chance it will get gifted, but it's bloody small. <laughs> so pink, we're noticing a theme, just to add to the theme. I also bought, oh yeah, I've got two of these. Um, I had to buy two more for the um, Lento, Fisher Bouche by Grey. Just thought I'd show you that I also got, my last ones are in skeins. I think they've transitioned to balls. My understanding is it's the total same thing. I think I prefer a skein to be frank, but what is? I do like that I don't have to wind it, but I think I find that the wound ball unravels better. Um, but I do think pink is a bit of a thing because I also got, oh my God, do I have a pink problem? No, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I also got four balls. This I bought directly from Skein Yarn. They had a 20% off sale this week, a little coupon code. And I was like, <laughs> shit. And I, I think I had a bit of like an impulse. I don't know what was going on. <laughs> I don't normally buy so much stuff. It was my birthday. Um, this is 100% super fine alpaca in the colorway Dusk. I originally bought this with the intention of knitting a pink fizz. Now, if I'm honest, I don't think I'm going to now. So I saw Amy Palco's P.S. I know I just talk about the same people all the time, but it's because I just really love them and I pretty much watch them all the time. So in my head there, we're all friends. <laughs> so it's like, anyway, I'm aware I talk about the same like four people over and over again. Amy just recently finished a cinnamon fizz, which was stunning. And I have been, it's been on there of one I want to make. And so when I saw this, I was like, sick, 100% alpaca. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing that and then I thought I could always purchase down the track um, a really beautiful mohair to go with it and you know it'd be amazing but I want to be clear I'm not unhappy with this it's just not quite what I thought it was gonna be and I don't quite know how to describe it it's not that it's not soft it is ridiculously soft but it has a bit more rusticiness to it than I was expecting for alpaca. I think my experiences with alpaca have either been like this, where it's just so ridiculously buttery. Like, and these actually look like they're quite similar. So ridiculously, and actually if I look at the fibers, they're actually looking kind of similar, but this just, I don't know, it's so ridiculously soft. Or the other one that I think of is the black wattle alpaca, which is a if you are not familiar with black wattle alpaca, they do other yarns as well, like wool-based yarns. Um, for the love of God, run, run, don't walk. Particularly if you're overseas. Like if you haven't checked this out, I reckon they are some of the most beautiful Australian yarns. Like if I was gonna say to somebody, and I haven't tried them all in fairness, but if I was gonna say to somebody, you know, if you're gonna order yarn, oh, see, now I'm gonna say that. Louis and Lola, Circus Tomic. There's a few other ones. Anyway, but the one, like the one that, like, I was thinking about this. If I was going to do a yarn swap with somebody, I think I'd be inclined to go Black Swaddle Yarns because everything I've used from there, I've used their, I think it's their Voratar base, which is the, or Gravillia base, and I think it's the Gravillia that's 100% alpaca. It's a four ply. And I knit my mum, I think it's called a First Light. I'm not going to write that one down because I cannot remember what I made her, to be honest. So I'm not going to write that one down below. But, I do have it on my Ravelry page, so if you want to check that one out, you can. Um, I'm Serenity Knits 23 on Ravelry. Some of you have been my friends on there. Thanks, guys. I didn't have any friends on Ravelry before this, and now i got friends. Um, I knit, so I knit a giant shawl out of that, like a six chain gang shawl or something ridiculous. Huge. It is amazing, and I want one for myself. I haven't knit anything for myself in that base, but I want to do so because I bought all that from Cast Off Collective, the beautiful Wendy in Valgala. It's, oh God, it's so good. It's so good. And so I think I imagined this was going to have a similar texture. This is beautiful. Very, very different. It's just a bit more rustic-y. Like if I didn't know, if it didn't say 100% alpaca, I would have guessed that there was something mixed in with it. It just has a different kind of feel. So... I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do with this. I have four balls. I've got two here. Four balls. Options. 
I could still do a pink fizz, but I don't think I want to. I think I want my pink fizz. It, it leans a bit more. Um, I think I want my pink fizz to be more pink. <laughs> You're all looking at this going, Alex, it is pink. It, ha it has more of like, it is almost like a lilac y. It's almost more purple to me in my brain. It's just, oh, look, I'm not even going to justify it. I just don't think it's exactly what I want for my pink fizz. End of story. I'm thinking maybe a half and half triangles wrap. And I know that I'm like the latest <laughs> to this party. Um, and I also know that some people, I, I've had a little poll on Instagram and some people are like, no, not a friggin' other one. I'm sick of seeing podcasters talk about it. Fair enough. Fair enough. But I'll be honest, I'm not entirely doing it for entertainment value. I'm doing it because I think it would be really, really therapeutic for me. <laughs> I think I would really, really use that. So I've got four of these. I think I'd need to use three. And then I'm thinking what I would do is I would then purchase at some other point another four, another three of these in um, probably the mist colorway or maybe like they've got a storm colorway, which is like a dark bluey gray. But then my brain is like, are you setting yourself up for a project that you can't really finish because you don't own the heart, the other yarn for the other half of it, which is a little bit true. What happens if they, because actually there were only three balls of the mist left when I saw it yesterday. And I was like, well, what if they're not going to make it anymore? I mean, I, there's no reason to think that. But I kind of don't want to cast on something that I can't finish. And I think it would really, really bother me if the texture of one side of it was markedly different from the other but if you hadn't told me that there was an I would I would almost think there was a little bit of linen in this just because of the way it feels just has a bit of I don't know it's a bit rustic -y. so I'm open to suggestions but I must admit I'm pretty I think I'm pretty set on a half and half triangles I think that's where I'm gonna go because even if I do half of it and and I need to buy something for the other half I think I could probably make it work um, and even though it's a massive project, I think part of why I've cast on so many things is because sometimes I just want to not have to look at a pattern, not have to think it through. I just want to pick up and knit some shit. I just want to get home, sit in front of the TV, not have to think about anything and knit. And I don't care if it takes me a thousand years, a, bil a bedillion years, to use my word of the day, to finish it. It's about the process, not the project. My fear is that I will take a bedillion years and never finish it. But again, I think I'm going to take a little bit of a leap of faith. So I'm very, very, very tempted to do that. I might knit up a little swatch because my understanding is that you cast on with the thousand stitches at the start or 300 stitches or whatever. I hate casting on a lot of stitches. I hate it. So if I'm going to do it, I will. But if I'm going to do it, I want to be sure I like the fabric first. But I think the squish factor, I think the drape factor, I think I'd use the shit out of it. A snuggle factor. So yeah. So I got that one. I think I've said this before, but I got this one straight from Skein Yarn. They had a 20% off code. I got pretty much everything else from the Sunspun, which I love. I love Sunspun. Gosh, their shipping was quick. I did express ship it. It was $2 extra. I never express ship, but I was like, two bucks. Come on. Faster. I don't know. I was impulse. I was impulsy, I think. Right. Last thing. Now, in fairness, this is not entirely an acquisition. I was given this actually for Christmas. Got some fluff on it. By my auntie. Look how cool this is. So this is also 100% alpaca. First of all, can I just say, I fucking love alpacas. Aren't they the best? Love them. So I got this for last Christmas for my auntie. I've got this one and another little one. Can you hear my, can you hear Buddy Mama in the background? He's chatting to my husband. Um, this is the chunky boy. And then there's also another little slightly smaller one. I have no idea what the yardage is. That's a little bit tricky. And I would estimate the gauge or the, you know what I mean? 
I reckon it's somewhere, I reckon you could probably go a DK worsted. Do you know what I mean? Like somewhere in the middle, because it's hand spun. I reckon it'd plomp up if you wanted to plomp, the technical term. Or I also reckon you could kind of knit it at a bit of a tighter gauge. Can you see that? Not really, but anyway. Right, so I have a question about this. I need some help. I've been keeping this to put in a sweater because I think that it would be the most beautiful colour work. And my thinking was, oh, what sweater do I think I would do? I don't know, something Nordic, right? Oh, hey, bud. But also, I've been wanting to like knit some little pumpkins. <laughs> and obviously, as you can see, this is a very pumpkin-y pumpkin. So I think what's putting me off here is I love the colour, but it's very, see here it's translating quite rust. In person, it's definitely rust, but it's on the orangier side of rust. Gosh, there's a lot of dogs barking. I think I prefer a brownie rust. Yeah, that's, it is, it's orange, right? Orange. So I have, I have some, I have some questions. A, do I just wait until I get the right project? Maybe that's an option. B, is there something that you suggest that would be really nice with this? I've got this, this big one and another little one. So I can't, I don't have no freaking clue how much I've got, but I would be pretty confident I would have enough for a decent cow of some description. I'd have plenty for a big colour work chunk. Or I could do like, I could probably do a hat and a cow to be honest. I've got plenty of stuff. But again, I don't know if this is my best colour. <laughs> That's cute. I don't know how often I'd wear orange. Not in something. C, do I just use the effing yarn? And make some, like, cause, oh yeah, okay. So here's the kind of rust. See how orange rust? I think I prefer the, the rust. Please don't eat that. It's not for eating. Um, do I just make some pumpkins? <laughs> Because I'd love, I actually thought it'd be a really fun way to make, to, to practice some cables. No, you can't eat it. This is what I struggle with every day, friends. Oh God, not the nutted in. Oh God, not the nutted in. Um, well, that's kind of nice. See, I don't know. Suggestions would be valuable. I'm, I'm, we don't really do a whole bunch of deck, like, Halloween decorations like I said Halloween's not a big thing but there's like this little part of me that just needs a pumpkin I need one let's say hi to everyone say hi hello hello he's gonna sit there he's like sniffing something do you know what the lighting's almost nicer over here maybe I should sit over here next time what do you think Do I need pumpkins? <laughs> it's possibly option C. So, A, I can't remember what I said. A, just wait. It's not going anywhere. It's really beautiful yarn, hand spun, hand grown, hand dyed in the Southern Highlands. Amazing. Wait for the right project. There's no rush. B, colour work in a jumper. Oh no, that was not it. That's not B. B, knit it into a hat hats and mittens or something and if so if there's a pattern suggestion be really really open for that oh you got something stuck in your mouth you right c pumpkins i'm leaning towards c it just feels like oh, i don't know you know what d the other option d is i could dye it. I could over dye it with a bit of like charcoal or maybe even a brown and try and deepen the rust a bit. You look so majestic over there. I'm seeing you in the camera and I'm like wow it's a nice looking cat. Very handsome. You're a very handsome boy. Yeah. Well on that note Buddy and I might go and uh a little cup of tea. We're gonna wind some yarn. I'm gonna I'm gonna cast on probably at least. Oh, do you know what? He does not bite me as much as he does on this podcast ever. 
It's like he knows the camera's on and he's like, don't, don't treat me like a baby. I'm a grown cat. Um, he's gone back to sit with his fish. I'm probably either going to cast on Sophie's Scarf or I don't know if I'm saying this right. Cecropia Cow. I'm very excited. I do think the High Garden did win. So this combo won on the Instagram. Uh, it was very close, like 49 something. I think what it'll come down to is also if I start knitting this up and it um, doesn't have a very good contrast, but I have done the black white contrast test and it should be fine. This is very dark. This is, I want a sweater in that. Right here, friends. I will, next time I see you, it will actually be me from the past. I'll be time traveling um, because I've got my next, all the stuff I made video. I think I'm gonna do beanies next. And then um, after that, it'll be um, present me again. So I think that's what I'm gonna do for the next few weeks is I'm gonna do a, um, like an episode episode and then, a, and then a, all the stuff I made episode in between. So we'll see how I go. I'm not going to hold myself to a super tight schedule, particularly with work. If things aren't happening, then no biggie. Um, but yeah, I'm so thrilled that you guys came to hang out with me. Congratulations again to Kimberly. I am so excited to hear about what you end up working with. And yeah, I'll see you soon.